Chris Harris from Board Game Geek. I'm here with Nick Metzler from Spin Master Games, and we are taking a look at Santorini, New York. Wow. I didn't even know until like yesterday that there was a new version of Santorini coming out. Can you tell us about yeah, it? We- like what what are some of the differences between the original Santorini, which I love? Um, but yeah. Yeah, me too. Uh, Santorini is one of my favorite games of all time. It's an absolutely incredible game where it's super easy to pick up. You can learn it in 30 seconds and play it for literally a lifetime and you won't get bored of it. Um, Happy to say that we captured that same essence in Santorini, New York, but it's a much different experience. Like it's a different play style than the typical game. So if you have the base game of Santorini and you like the feel of it, you're going to like Santorini, New York and the feel of that one. Um, so I've been watching all the Reddit streams. Uh, everybody's talking about Santorini, New York. I think the funniest part is uh, people saying, why did they name it two cities in one? Come on, we got we to gotta have some link to Santorini. It's the same feel, right? right? right. So that's why we did it. Um, <laughs> and this comes out on 10-1, uh, August 1st, okay. or October 1st. Um, so that's why you're hearing about it right now. Uh, that's why there was no pre-buzz about it. Um, but yeah, that is coming soon. All right, so um, in the game, yeah, in the game, you are trying to build the city of Manhattan. And that's actually where I am right now. I'm in Manhattan. um, And you are trying to build the skyline of Manhattan with your workers. um, And you have roll cards to do that. So unlike the core game of Santorini, um, in this game, you will be playing cards each turn. Um, okay. These are one-time use cards, so the powers are pretty good. Um, and you will be choosing from your deck of five cards in your hand of which ones you want to play and when to give you those different powers. So this is the board, um, and you will be placing these blocks on the board like so. Uh, again, like the base game of Santorini, as soon as you make it to the top of a stack of three, um, you win. So that's your goal, Um, but the game moves really fast. There's a second win condition if you are the engineer role, um, which means if you place a blue rooftop, if you place a blue rooftop on top of the set of three, you also win. So there's an opportunity there. Um, In the game, you will be using primarily these roll cards to do everything you want. We got a big stack. Um, wow. You're only going to use four sets every single game, so the game is super replayable. So, for example, I'll take the fashion designer. Um, I'll take the taxi driver. Um, I'll take a builder card as well. So I'll take the foreman. Okay. And then finally, I will have the engineer, uh, wherever the engineer is. Somewhere. I don't want to waste time. Um, so at the beginning of the game, you will put out the, the reference cards to the side like this. So everybody okay. knows what cards are in the game. Okay. And I will have the, I imagine you'd have the engineer card over here as well. You take mm-hmm. these cards, shuffle them together, give everybody five cards. Okay. So for example, this would be this bad shuffle because it was on camera. <laughs> this would be a bad Fifth shuffle. Example, <laughs> Terrible shuffle, but these would be your cards, right? Okay. Really bad shuffle. Oh my God. Um, (laughs) Let me try to fix that here. All right. So typically there's four types of cards in the deck, um, which Mm -hmm. you can stack in any way you want. Um, But say, for example, you got these five. On your turn, you're going to pick one of these five. You're going to place it face down. Everybody's going to reveal at the same time. And you've got initiative order. So the highest number will go last, um, but the highest number is also the only person that can win the game on their turn. So it gets around the team maker problem really, really well because everybody's trying to prevent the one person that has the Statue of Liberty from winning. So if you play the highest card, you get the Statue of Liberty. Um, And that is the only person that can win the game on their turn. So everybody else is looking at that one person saying, we need to find a way to stop that player from winning. And it's quite fun oh, because of that. Cool. Um, it becomes an all against one every single turn. So for example, uh, the, the basics of the game is still move and build. So 
you're always going to have to move and you're always going to have to build on your turn, but these roll cards allow you to break the rules every single time. So for this first one, let's say I'm this guy right here. Uh, actually, let's pick a better color because so that it won't contrast. Um, say, for example, I'm right here. I'm going to move one space in any direction, move there, and then I'm going to build in one of the eight spaces that surrounds me. Um, so for example, I can place this block right here. Um, but my roll card allows me a special bonus action here. So okay. if you ever forget what those icons are, that's why we've got the reference cards right there. So it says, uh, at the start of your turn, if possible, choose a neighboring worker. After moving your worker, force the chosen worker into the vacated space. So to illustrate that, let's say you've got an opponent worker up here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to choose this worker as my neighboring worker. I'm going to move here and force this guy to come down here into the, the vacated space. So I would know these things before you know, playing the card, and that will inform my decision of which card I should play and when. Um, but the exciting bit is because the initiative order is based on the number up here, you don't know when you're actually going to go. So it, it's very possible uh -huh. that this guy up here plays this card, which is number 10. <laughs> it's a lower turn order than this one, and it's about to screw up my plan. Right. So let's right. go with this guy now. So okay. this is the foreman. Uh, the foreman, his power says, on your build, you must choose a neighboring worker and must then build in two different spaces neighboring that worker. All right, so as the foreman, I'm going to choose this person as a neighboring worker. And before the start of my turn, I'm going to um, build in two different spaces neighboring that worker as my turn, as my build. So okay. um, I'm going to move. And then I'm going to use this person to build two spots like so. So as you can see, um, there's a lot of different variation in how the turns will go based on the role cards that you play. And you do have control of that at all points in time. Um, so this game is about 80, 85% strategy, um, plus a little bit of luck as to what cards you end up with with the initiative order. Um, the engineer is really powerful for winning and also putting skyscrapers on the board. The engineer's power is always included in every single game, and they represent some of the highest numbers in the game as well. So if you play an engineer, you're much more likely to get the Statue of Liberty and have an opportunity to win. As the engineer, um, your first, uh, the first thing that you do is place one of the skyscrapers in a neighboring space next to you. And then you move and build like normal. However, if you're able to place a rooftop on top of a stack of three, you also win. So this board gets very clustered very fast. And you are <laughs> trying to figure out when is the best time to play an engineer and try and claim the win. Wow. Wow. This is this seems like so, you know, similar to the original Santorini, but so many different interesting new layers that I don't know, and 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 choosing the different role cards that you're going to be playing, and everybody having a hand of cards, um, and the the buildings and everything look great. How did you guys decide uh, which kind of like New York iconic buildings to use, or to yeah, like model a really these? Good question. Um, we we put the theme in the beginning of the 20th century, and this is the hustle and bustle of New York City actually being built up, and at this point in time. Uh, six buildings went up that each broke the previous record for world's tallest building um, in the course of like 35 years. And so we included those six in the game. Um, let me show you. They're all custom sculpts, which is pretty cool. We got a flat iron building up here. And the lighting doesn't show it very well, but it's like a really nice gold. Um, yeah. You got the Rockefeller. Go top of the rock. Of course, you've got the Empire State Building. Um, that was the tallest building in the world um, for the, that was the sixth building. Um, and you got a couple other buildings here. Yeah. But they look beautiful and they tower above everything else. So by the time you're done with the game, you've got an incredible uh, New York skyline that you've constructed and it's just absolutely stunning. So I, I'm, I'm really excited like... to have helped with this game, bringing it to market. Yeah, it, it looks Great. And I really love that how the Statue of Liberty plays in where if you have the highest initiative, you're going last, but you're the only one for that round who actually could win. 
Um, yeah, <laughs> that's that's a great mechanic. Yeah, it's, a, it's a really uh, nice twist, uh, and it plays extremely well for two to five players. Um, awesome. Because of the fact that only one player can win any given turn, everyone's looking to make sure to not let that player win. Um, right. So you're often trying trying to like put yourself in a corner and make sure that you have the opportunity to win no matter what, no matter what anybody yeah. else does. Sure, and I, I've always been in the mindset with the original Santorini that it's best with two players. And I, 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 I almost exclusively only play that with two players. And this seems like it just lends itself to, it'll be a lot more interesting with even more players or mixing up the player count for this. Seems like it'll be, um, yeah, like way, way more interesting than having more players in the original Santorini. Um, yeah, yeah, I you agree have a, with that. Um, the big piece here is the stack of cards. There's so many cards that you can put into the game. Um, there's 14 different sets, and every every time you play, you play with four different card sets. So the combinations there are, are huge. Um, yeah. And you're going to have to remake the strategy every single time you play. That's awesome. Uh, there was a comment in the chat from uh, GamerJoe127, uh, who's also in uh, New York City. But... Um, he was asking if there's going to be a deluxe edition. I mean, this looks deluxe already, but uh, do you guys have any plans to make a, an even more deluxe version? We currently don't have plans uh, to make a deluxe center in New York, but again, anything depends. Um, if this game blows up, there's a possibility that that happens. Sure, and, and you said it's available October 1st. Um, it will be available just uh, in retail. Retail, just going straight to retail? Yeah, uh, retail, it's uh, Amazon, Walmart, and Target. Uh, I can't confirm if all three took it. I think they did, but I'm not positive. Um, and we are also working with a couple distributors for uh, friendly local game stores um, to make that happen. Awesome. Um, can you talk about like the process of getting the license for um, creating this from the original game? Yeah, so we work hand in hand with Roxley. Um, they're our partners in the project. Um, so they developed the entire thing. Um, they did all okay. the gameplay, they did all the art. Um, so you'll get that same level of, of quality that you expect from Roxley. It's just a fantastic product. Like it, it feels beautiful, um, yeah. but we're trying to get it to you at a, at a very reasonable price so that it doesn't really hit your wallet in a major way. We appreciate that. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Um, so, I think we, we have like one or two more yeah, minutes, more Nick, questions? if you had anything else to, um, to add. I don't know if there are any more questions. I might do an AMA on Reddit as well at some point. So we'll see. Cool, cool. Awesome. Oh, I, I, think, I think that's it. This looks great. I'm glad cool. you had a copy of the game to actually show us because I'm, I'm kind of drooling yeah, over this, here. I can't wait. This just, this. Got, this just got here like a week ago, um, I actually put all the pictures on Board Game Geek, and that's what blew up. And I was like, "All right, cool." <laughs> so this is the copy. <laughs> awesome. Well, this is uh, Santorini, New York, uh, available October first. Um, and this is Nick from Spin Master. Thanks again, Nick. Thanks for watching, everyone.